We're now going to talk about triple integrals in cylindrical coordinates. Now, cylindrical coordinates are similar to polar coordinates, but there's one extra coordinate, z. So Cartesian coordinates, x, y, and z, correspond to cylindrical coordinates, r, theta, and z. And they're defined as follows. So if we draw the Cartesian axes, If we have a point x, y, z, we can drop a perpendicular to the x, y plane to reach the point x, y, 0. The height of this perpendicular is z. And then the, we look at the line from x, y, 0 to the origin. And the length of that line is r. And the angle that that line makes with the x axis is theta. Okay, And then the formula is to convert between cylindrical and Cartesian are x equals r cosine theta, y equals r cosine theta, sorry, r sine theta, and z equals z. Okay, so x and y are being converted into r and theta just like in polar coordinates, and z is left alone. And you can go the other way using the formulas r squared equals x squared plus y squared and tangent of theta equals y over x. Okay, so let's now think about how to integrate using cylindrical coordinates. Let's start a new page. So here's the kind of region we might want to integrate over. So in the xy plane, we have one of the polar regions that we've been integrating over before. Let's call this R. So what R looks like, I'll draw it over here. So we have the line um, R equals theta. Sorry, we have the line theta equals alpha for some alpha. And here we have the line theta equals beta for some beta. And then we have a curve here. This is r equals h1 of theta, and here's another boundary curve, r equals h2 of theta, and r is this region in between. Okay, so r is the set of points in the plane with polar coordinates r and theta, such that alpha is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to beta, and h1 of theta is less than or equal to r is less than or equal to h2 of theta. Okay, and now we're going to look at a solid region whose shadow is R. And let's see, it's going to have sort of vertical walls over R. So it's going to look something like this. Right? So it's a solid region here. So the um, upper or top surface of this region is going to be the graph of some function phi2. So this is the surface z equals phi2 of x and y. And its bottom surface boundary is z equals phi1 of x, y. Okay, so the region R, or the region E, sorry, so this, let's call this whole solid region E. So E is the set of x, y, z, such that x, y is in the region R, and v1 of x, y is less than or equal to z, is less than or equal to v2 of x, y. Okay. So we have some solid region whose shadow is one of these polar regions. And now, when the region is described this way, we can do triple integrals in polar coordinates like this. So the triple integral over E of some function f with respect to volume is the integral as theta goes from alpha to beta, and r goes from h1 of theta 
to h2 of theta, and then z goes from phi1, well, I can also think of phi1 as a function defined for points in polar coordinates. So to, for phi1 of r theta to phi2 of r theta, and f of r theta z, and then we need a magnification factor like before. So we have r dz dr d theta. So this r here is the same magnification factor as in polar coordinates. And it comes from the fact that if you take a rectangle in the polar coordinates where r varies by delta r and theta varies by delta theta, then its area is not delta r times theta, rather its area is approximately delta r times delta theta times r. Okay, so that's the basic formula for integrating in cylindrical coordinates, and we'll do some examples in the next lecture segment.